Hi, my name is Ludo. I'm a consultant on regenerative agriculture and I'm working here for Ecosia with, uh, who hired me for, to work with one of their partner, tree partners, uh, tree planting partners in Burkina Faso and we're working here on a 40 hectare property, piece of land 20 hectares of agroforestry and 20 hectares of grazing. And uh, we've been focusing on the uh, agroforestry part of it. We planted beans and sesame and we put in earthworks to harvest water and then now we're starting to plant trees. So you're gonna hear me talking about swell regularly because we had uh, we we have installed three kilometers of them on the site here on the agroforestry mainly section of it so 20 hectare and uh, so I thought I should cover what is a swell a swell is a ditch on contour it doesn't have to be that big it can be just done with a shovel we did them with the front loading tractor at the beginning obviously an excavator would have been better but we do with whatever we have so we had a um, backhoe coming uh, and the backhoe was using his front loading uh, device to just dig and dump, dig and dump. And so the whole purpose of this system is to capture the water. You can see the ground that we're working on is very poor, a lot of runoff, nothing to hold the, the water but stones so the stone hold the somewhat the soil in place and that's it there is nothing else so now the runoffs stop here the water is being pacified because the whole ditch is dug on contour meaning at the same level so when the water arrives here it has not, nowhere to go it doesn't tilt in any way and so because it sits here it just infiltrates you can see we had a rain event last night and you can see this line here, that's where the water was. And here, and it just infiltrated. And very soon we're not gonna have any water anymore. That means in around a million of liter is going into the ground versus going, rushing off the property, going into the river, from the river to a bigger one, to another country, to the sea, because that's what happened in West Africa. So now we're holding the water and you need to understand that Swells are not a, a solution for um, a one solution for all system, for all program for all project. We use them because we have a lot of bare land, a lot of runoffs, and we need to build tree systems. So we stock the water here. If we plant below, the water that's infiltrated here will help the rows of trees that we're going to plant on three kilometers to grow. And above we'll be planting trees as well. So this will be covered, we'll be losing way less water through evaporation, which is the main problem here. And we'll be establishing forest strips throughout and in between, like you can see in the back, we're planting, we're doing the agro part of the agroforestry. I'm going to show you a little bit of the uh, swell system behind me. We've been pruning trees. Yes, we've been pruning trees. And uh, you can see the, the swell system going. This swell is uh, one kilometer long and we have another two swells which are um, adding up to altogether three kilometers. Um, I'm going to walk to a uh, I'm gonna stay under the shade for a little bit. Whew. Um, um, just below over there, in the direction of the water tank, we have an overflow on swell number three, which they're called number one on top, two, and then three on the bottom. So when it comes out of number three, then we lose the water. And I'm gonna show you what we've done here to be able to make sure water goes down as passively as possible. Uh, so let's go. Here I am at a one of the overflow. 
the overflow or the spillway is where the, the system is coming off and we want this to be as passive as possible so this row of stones here have been put together with the laser level to have this edge all the time at the same height so when the water go goes up it crawl over and slowly come out we're on uh, swell number three so that means that when we are losing the water here that's it we don't have anything anymore there is no system to catch it anymore it goes to the river and goes on the technique we used here was um, not rocks this time but readily available carbon source from last year's growing we put some sticks and shove the carbon here so it slows down the water and you can see we've done few of them we still have a little bit of erosion that we need to deal with but this technique has uh, proven very uh, effective and one thing that we learned through the process is the sticks that we put in now are growing very small leaves here so this is a very good news we'll be able to use sticks like this and put it throughout the system so this is a, a good news sometimes when you try you just find out uh, solutions and then this can be applied on a large scale so yesterday night this system was overflowing and we could see the water coming out but you can still see that there is a lot of water in the in the swell um, the, the level was here and obviously over but all of this now is in the ground the, between here and there all this water went into the ground that's the whole purpose of the swell system holding water passively uh, spreading it throughout the landscape allowing it for infiltration and then we can plant tree systems below and the water is saturated with water the ground is saturated with water and now we can establish tree system much easily than if it was just runoff erosion and nothing else Okay, so on the tour of this 20 hectare uh, of the uh, agroforestry site, I wanted to show you a little bit of the uh, weed response or the uh, hard workers. As soon as seeds are in the ground and we capture the water, let it sit here, the response, and that's what I would like to see everywhere on the swells, the response is tremendous. We have uh, a lot of nitrogen fixer. This guy you can see everywhere on the site. Well, not everywhere, I, I wish. But this guy is toxic to the animals, so that's why it's, it's growing so readily. It's basically the first one that grows when uh, there is repairs to be done. It fixes nitrogen, has biomass, grows very quickly and can establish itself with not much water so it's a very interesting plant for us and you can see there is different you know species growing here this is a very nice um, area that shows us that things will go the right way compared to you can see over there where we planted the sesame and the bean that's what we started with everything was like this you remove the beans and the sesame and that's what we started with a desert of rocks and rocks so this is very encouraging and uh, I'm sure as the water or the rain events are going to be more regular we'll be seeing much more of this around the, the site here okay this is another interesting part of the uh, the agroforestry parts the 20 hectare we have we I, I am on the swell number two this is the first overflow or first spillway that's the the first spot where we let the water go out and because we are a little bit in the dip here we, we the swell didn't we, we didn't make the swell follow the contour line exactly because otherwise it would have brought it us too high in the landscape then we took this shortcut for say and because of that, we didn't have enough material to be able to build the, the berm. 
like there is behind me here. So we use readily available um, rocks and we build a basket out of wire, stuff it with rocks. In front of it we put a top, a very heavy gauge uh, semi-truck type plastic to make sure that we could decide on what level the water would come out of the system and that allows for the water to still stay in the swell so still doing its job and when it comes out it will passively go over the rocks and go down onto uh, the swell number three and because we slow down the water here we have a lot of vegetation growing so this is the place where it's a little bit of a hidden paradise in this landscape it doesn't look like the other part of the, the field and this this part has a very um, strong reaction to holding water everything spring back and we can see diversity in species there is birds around those those trees that obviously were established i'm sure very happy the amount of water that can be infiltrated in the ground it, it works really good we had one overflow uh, we had one use of this overflow already during the very large event um, and uh, yeah it's working really good it was a little bit of work to to construct but now it's going to last for a very long time so good stuff So here we are on the Moringia plantation. It's one and a half hectare, separated in 17 cells with living fences. You can see maybe on the on the image the uh, the sticks. Those are uh, Glaricidia cuttings that we put uh, throughout to separate the cells. We'll be adding diversity in non-spiky nitrogen-fixing um, trees, but. Um, just to show you a little bit of the quality of the soil that we're dealing with, there is uh, rocks, sand, clay. It's a good mix for concrete. So this is what we have to deal with here. So we're digging a little bit of a nut and pen, um, net and pen uh, system. So every tree can be watered during the long spell of the dry spells. And when it rains, like last night, a little bit of water can be... Oh, it was full, actually. It was so much water. Water can be uh, stored here, infiltrate, and help these guys grow. So we established this yesterday. Uh, we planted around 600 trees now. Um, the whole thing will take, and I'm talking just Moringa, um, will take 800 um, trees plus edges. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be turning into a forest. This is, this is the main production for now. Moringa for seeds, oil. That's what uh, Ashti, the um, Ecosia partner, is uh, focusing on the um, production of oil. So, one more thing I wanted to show you is for you to understand what we started with. Before there was nothing here, huh? no beans, no greens, no nothing. And uh, I've been talking with uh, locals here, this, they told me that it's been at least 25 years since they saw someone doing any farming in here. I'm pretty sure it's a bit more than that. And uh, definitely this is for pretty much everybody that I've been talking to. This is the greenest it's been, thanks to right now not so much the swell system because we're just banking the water we didn't plant yet but thanks to the the rip that we've done everywhere on site with the uh, yeoman's plow the yeoman's plow had a tremendous effect on the on the land it doesn't look so good but it's way better than what it would have done what you can see out, just outside of the system it's completely compacted, completely. The top is eroding, there is a hard pan and, or a crust, sorry, 
and uh, there is nothing that can grow. Now we can establish, it's difficult, but we can establish stuff. There is a little bit of the grasses that are starting to grow again. There is definitely, you can see in the back here, um, maybe over there, up there. I don't know if you can see, but there is a big weed response and that's a good sign because that means the reparation is, uh, the regeneration is on the, on the go. So we'll see how good we can go with this first crop. Most of it will return to the soil, like I was saying, this is gonna grow very big. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for, for this time. Now I hope you uh, were interested in what I had to say about this tough work that we're doing here in West Africa, in Burkina Faso, in very dry and hot Burkina Faso. Until next time, see you.